the British are invading, and it's time to set up our defenses. There are two ways the British can attack, by land and by sea. The Patriots have 90 units to defend the city, and they can allocate them between those two vectors. The British can see how the Patriots allocate defenses. They have really good spies and thus can base their strategy according to how the Patriots have defended things. Who wins is a function of which attack vector the British take and how many defenses were set up. Specifically, the probability that the Patriots win, given that the British attack by land, is 0.5 plus 0.3 times the number of units divided by 90. Meanwhile, the probability that the Patriots win if the British attack by sea is 0.2 plus 0.6 times the number of units divided by 90. Your puzzle for today is to figure out how the Patriots can best allocate their defenses and maximize their probability of victory. While you think about that, check out some of these cool books that I've written. Your hint for today is that you need to use backward induction to solve this problem. That's a topic I cover in Chapter 2 of Game Theory 101, the complete textbook. If you look at this problem without thinking about backward induction, you might suspect that you want to go heavily into the by C defense. That's for two reasons. First, it's your natural weak point. If you allocated no troops anywhere, then you would only win 20% of the time if the British attacked by sea, versus 50% of the time if they attacked by land. Second, the marginal increase in the probability of victory per unit is larger by sea than it is by land. That is, 0.6 as a multiplier is larger than 0.3 as a multiplier. But imagine that you allocated all of your troops to the sea. Imagine how the British would respond. They can observe your defenses and choose how to attack accordingly. If you have allocated all of your defenses to the sea, your probability of victory is 80% if the British attack by sea, but only 50% if they attack by land. As a result, the British would attack by land here they would not be attacking by sea. Imagine instead that you allocated some amount of defense to the land, say, a ninth of your soldiers. Now, if the British attack by land, your probability of victory is about 53.3%. In contrast, if the British attack by sea, your probability of victory is about 73.3%. The British are still going to respond with an attack by land, but now your probability of victory is slightly higher than it was before. We could spend all day doing guess and check on this problem, but there's a more efficient way of arriving at the solution. Let's think about what the British are going to do, and it might help to look at this graphically. On the horizontal axis, we have the number of troops allocated to defending the land. On the vertical axis, we have the probability that the Patriots win. And we'll do this as two separate functions. One if the British attack by land, and two if the British attack by sea. To begin, this green line represents the probability that the Patriots win given a land attack. Notice that it increases in the number of troops sent to the land. That makes sense. The more defense you have in the land, the less likely the British are to win. Meanwhile, this blue line represents the probability that the Patriots win given an attack by sea. This time, it decreases in the number of troops sent to land. That's because more troops sent to land means fewer troops sent to defend the sea, which then in turn means that the British are more likely to win. Think about this from the British perspective now. Using this figure, they can write down a plan of action. Specifically, this cut point right here, where those two probabilities intersect, is critical to what the British want to do. 
if we have a number of troops sent to the land that is lower than that number, then the British will want to attack by land. Their probability of victory is better under those circumstances, by virtue of the fact that the Patriots' probability of victory is lower. In contrast, any allocations to the right of that dashed line are going to be situations where the British prefer to attack by sea. And now that we know that, we can make some progress on what the Patriots should do with their allocation. In particular, because we know the British response to any given allocation, we can truncate this figure to be the Patriots' probability of victory given the British best response. And that looks like this. From here, it's clear that the best the Patriots can do is choose an allocation that makes the British indifferent between attacking by land and attacking by sea. Of course, all we have here is a picture. What we really need to know is where exactly those two lines intersect. But fortunately, that's easy enough. It's a simple question of asking where those two probabilities of victory are equal. Let x be the number of troops allocated to defending the land. Thus, 90 minus x is the number of troops allocated to defending the sea. Where those two lines intersect is where this equation actually has the equality. Some simple algebra shows that you get equality at x equal to 30. And thus, the answer to this puzzle is that you need to allocate 30 troops to the land and 60 troops to the sea. That is, one-third by land and two-thirds by sea. If you enjoyed this puzzle, let me know in the comments, and be sure to like, share, and subscribe. I'll see you next time. Take care.